Hi all. Our instructive game today has the theme of hijacking diagonals. It was Tigran Petrosian versus Boris Spassky played in the Moscow World Championship of 1966. Petrosian playing white played knight f3. So the Reti. After knight f6 he played g3. And after g6 he now played c4. So we have transposed into the English opening. Spassky now played bishop g7. And after bishop g2 both sides now castled. And now Spassky played knight c6. So he has a kind of king's engine set up here. And after knight c3 d6 Petrosian did actually commit his d-pawn to transpose it into the Fincetto variation of the king's engine defence. After a6, d5, knight a5, I want you to notice something about the dark squares here. In this variation, black often plays now this plan of c5, and this diagonal is often quite dangerous on the diagonal. The theme of the game is hijacking diagonals, and this is one diagonal which is later hijacked by Petrosian, and the other, which is not very apparent at this moment in time, but I'll show you anyway, is this diagonal. So we're going to see how the game evolved, and for these diagonals to become critical for the outcome. After knight d2, c5, we see black strengthening grip on the dark squares, so the d4 square, and following this standard plan of queenside expansion with later b5, but first, after queen c2, Spassky played e5, so he's closing that centre, and also, as well as b5, he's also, maybe, you know, he's got the intention now of a later f5 after moving the knight. So it's play on both sides of the board. So knight g4 now, unblockading the f-pawn for f5. And now, Petrosian, he played e4, so he doesn't mind black playing f5, because... He wants to play e takes f5 to at least gain some pressure and have a semi-open e-file against this e5 pawn. f5 was played, so Petrosian took on f5. He doesn't mind bishop takes f5 because that would give white the e4 square. So black has to take back with uh, g takes f5. And now knight d1. So Petrosian is kind of inviting Spassky to take this diagonal and put more pressure on it with e4. But first, Spassky actually plays b5. So it seems as though black's got an active position on both sides of the board here, playing quite aggressively, which is in Spassky's style. Petrosian, though, he's a very provocative player. And actually, Pioneer, what might be termed the negative school of chess, so provoking the opponent forward to exploit the weaknesses after. And here, this is a very dramatic example of hijacking all, all the seemingly you know, attacking diagonals which were attacking from the opponent's perspective. So after f3 we see e4. So this vicious bishop on the diagonal is however now neutralized with bishop b2 and this passive looking knight has a clear purpose now of supporting that bishop. So white's able to hold things together for the moment. After e takes f3, bishop takes f3 Black now plays bishop takes b2, and this is the first sign of hijacking taking place, because the queen now takes on b2. So who owns this diagonal now? White has that mighty queen there, which actually will play a decisive role later. There'll be an amazing tactical idea making use of this queen on the diagonal very, sh very soon in this game. After knight e5, Petrosian now actually played bishop e2. f4 was played. And apparently, according to Ribka, the best move for white would have actually been rook takes f4, not what was played. What was played was g takes f4, and Spassky, perhaps, his best move would have been rook takes f4 here, with the idea that if rook takes f4, queen g5, and it wouldn't have been as bad as the game. So he's picking back the rook with, with a reasonable position. In the game, though, after g takes f4, Spassky actually retreated... Um, well, he's about to retreat his knight, but first he played bishop h3. Petrosian, he has an idea of taking control of this diagonal to gain access to this diagonal. He plays the first major exchange stack, knight e3. And here, Ribka actually really likes this position for white already, 
after knight e3, an advantage to white. So not only centralizing the knight, inviting black to lose that defensive bishop on that diagonal. So this will give access for white to this key e6 square. So that important diagonal there will soon be in white's possession. So the hijacking of this second diagonal is in process now. So bishop takes f1, rook takes f1, and now knight g6. So you see now the power of this queen, it's stretching now to the h8 square. And now white seizes the second diagonal, bishop g4. So this diagonal, because what black's just lost the light square bishop, gaining access to this square. And after knight takes f4, Petrosian, not afraid to sacrifice exchanges, plays yet another exchange sacrifice. Rook takes f4. After rook takes f4, bishop e6 check. And now black's really in trouble. If king f8, for example, then the queen would just come into h8 with decisive effect. King e7, queen takes h7, king e8. Now here queen h5 continues the attack. For example, queen g5 here, and it's, it's all over. Massive advantage for white. So black's in trouble and has to, unfortunately, put the rook in front for the check. And now another major centralizing knight move was played, knight e4. So white's gained possession of these two diagonals, working very well, and the knight's adding support to these attacking uh, points of vulnerability. Queen h4 was played. And now knight takes d6. So this pin is really being exploited. Spassky now played queen g5 check. And after king h1, played the defensive move, rook a to a7. And now here, both diagonals are used for a wonderful combination. Petrosian first plays bishop takes f7 check. And after rook takes f7, the other diagonal is decisively used here. I'll give you five seconds to see if you can spot Petrosian's next move, starting from now. Petrosian's next move was the beautiful Queen H8 check, and this caused immediate resignation from Tomaski. The decoy is decisive. After King takes H8, Knight takes F7 check, and White will be a whole piece up after say king g7 knight takes g5 so we see in this game how these diagonals came into white's possession let's have a quick overview and summary of this game so knight f3 knight f6 and we have here first an english opening transposition and then a transposition into the king's engine where white playing d4 so the fianchetto variation of the king's engine black seemingly playing very active on both sides of the board c5 and an e5 later to support f5 being played. So all very aggressive play from black. And now knight d1, seemingly a passive move, but necessary, necessary to support bishop b2s. After b5, f3 was played. And now, instead of moving the knight back, perhaps that was um, a good alternative to what was played, e4 was played instead. And after bishop b2, this bishop was being challenged, and this is the first diagonal to be hijacked, with the white queen ending up on that critical b2 square. After knight e5, there's a temporary blockade on that diagonal, but after bishop e2, f4, white lifts that blockading knight on e5, with this lovely exchange sacrifice now, after g takes f4, bishop h3, simply playing knight e3, wanting this knight to move away, and giving up voluntarily the exchange to try and get access to this other diagonal. So bishop takes f1, rook takes f1, knight g6, and now bishop g4 coming in for this other diagonal. Not afraid to sacrifice yet another exchange. After knight takes f4, rook takes f4, rook takes f4, bishop e6 check. And white's pieces coming in very powerfully now with knight e4. So a lot of target areas, so f7 and d6. Queen h4, Petrosian simply played knight takes d6. He doesn't worry about any queen e4 checks, that's harmless here. Queen g5 check was played after king h1, rook a7. We see the final beautiful move coming up 
after bishop takes f7, rook takes f7, we see the beautiful queen h8 check, finishing the game there and then. Petrosian won the World Championship match of 1966, and this was one of the decisive games. It's a real clash of styles being demonstrated. Spassky, the, the fierce attacking player, against Petrosian, the highly provocative player, who started the school of what was known as negative chess, you know, encouraging the opponent to go on the attack just to try and exploit those attacking roads after. And this game is a vivid demonstration of that concept and being able to hijack critical diagonals. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.